Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. I had someone email me a question about color fringing or chromatic aberrations as they're also called. And so I wanted to do a quick video on how I control it. Although it's pretty funny, I went through and probably went through about five years of photos and really could not find a suitable image in order to show you one of my photos that I had taken with the problem. I looked and I looked and I looked and I just could not find anything with any kind of heavy chromatic aberration. So what I actually ended up doing is talking to uh, a friend and someone that helps me out on the forum, um, Roy Van Amen, and he's from the Netherlands. Here's his website. Uh, basically, he sent me a couple photos, which we'll go over here in a second, that had some, some issues. Uh, my... From learning about it and doing some research on it, it seems to be pretty well controlled as far as the newer coatings. So that is one more reason to consider or save up for a newer lens. Uh, all those newer coatings, the fancy stuff that they talk about, all those uh, fancy numbers and letters and all those things, the newer lenses basically, they're going to control all of these issues a lot better rather than the uh, older lenses. So it's definitely something to think about if you have this problem a lot. Um, now this article actually on the Lightroom Journal website goes into depth and there's a ton of really good information here that you should definitely check out. Basically it is showing you some good examples of what's going on and how to properly go through it. Now, uh, there are multiple types of fringing here, and I'm not going to bore you with a lot of these details, but I strongly suggest taking a look at this article if you have the problem and um, kind of dive into it more in depth. Now, this is mainly dealing in Lightroom. There are a ton more ways to control it within Photoshop, and I'll put some additional links to some videos to help you if you're working within Photoshop. Now, we have our couple of photos here, and um, again, this is just a quick way to just kind of down and dirty get it done. Uh, if you did need a lot more control, then I suggest taking it into Photoshop and really doing it right and processing it a little bit heavier. Um, but for these two, it's pretty well controlled uh, from what I found, and actually the result is very good. So we have this first photo here, and you know what? I think I forgot to turn it off, so let's go back. And as you see, I was playing with it a lot. Back to my initial import. <laughs> and so let's zoom in. So first, what is that color fringing or that chromatic aberration? It's this pinkish, yellowish, different tone, whatever it is at the edge of a dark object that is in contrast to a lighter area behind it. So I'm going to update to the new process here. And so uh, what do we do to get rid of it? First thing I like to do is zoom in to 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 so that we can really see what's going on. If we're way out here at 100%, you're not, or at, uh, at a fit and just being able to see just this little bit, you're really not going to see what's going on. So you got to be able to zoom in and take a look at it closely. So we're going to go over here to our lens corrections panel inside of the develop module. And the first thing that they that you should do is try this basic remove chromatic aberration box. It does a pretty good job. Basically what it's doing is it's looking along the dark and light edges looking for those purple bluish tones and then it is desaturating them. And as you see it did a pretty good job. Uh, the nice thing about this image is since it is mostly um, it's mostly monochromatic with just the, the white and the black, there really isn't a lot of magenta to get rid of and, or to um, kind of mess up and so it's, it works out pretty well. Now we can zoom in here and then we can increase our amount if we need to and that's going to help it just a touch. You still have a little bit of the blue here but I don't think that's an issue. That one really doesn't bother me too much but other than that I think it's pretty well controlled and um, if we go back and I show you the before and then the after it definitely has made a big difference so let's go on to our next photo here and this one is a little bit more sophisticated and once again I forgot to go back to my initial import so let's do that and update there we go okay so here is the full image 
and then I'm going to zoom in to the problem area. Now, first thing we want to do is try that checkbox, that remove checkbox. It's doing a pretty good job, but it's not absolutely perfect. I'll zoom in a touch more here. You still see a little bit of that purplish, pinkish kind of area right there. So let's try our amount slider here. And when we hit our amount slider, we're actually starting to remove some of that color down inside of this logo. Now, since I don't know the proper color for this logo of whether it's actually uh, suffering from the from the fringing or if it is supposed to be that bluish color, I wouldn't want to remove the color out of that. So I'm going to leave it back at the zero spot there. And then I'm going to go up here to my brush and I'm actually just going to add a little bit more. Now, we're going to zoom in even more. Oops, turn my brush back off. And we're going to zoom in even a little bit more here. Let's go to just five so we can really see what we're doing. Turn this off. Okay. So, again, we just want to hit this edge. So, first thing I'm going to do, look at my brush. And my brush size is a little bit big, so let's make it smaller. By the way, I am a huge fan of using the keyboard shortcuts on your computer rather than always using the mouse it definitely speeds up your workflow um, left and right bracket next to the p key on your keyboard above the return is the way to go for resizing your brushes both in photoshop as well as lightroom so we can uh, let's change my feather a little bit i want a little bit less feathering there i think that's probably good maybe a slightly bigger brush now so I am going to increase my defringing and then I can go along and just brush this area in. Space bar brings up my hand tool so that I can move around. And that is looking better. Uh, it's starting to get a little bit on the too desaturated side. But that's where you can come back in and you can increase your saturation uh, of just that area. You can play with just the defringe slider. What I would like to do a lot is actually take my exposure slider and turn it to one side or the other so I can really see where I'm putting my brush. All right. And then I can see that like through here it didn't have as much of an effect. And I can come back up through here. Okay, and just see, and just make sure that I'm getting that edge. Okay, so that's better. So now I'm going to reset my exposure slider. Let's reset my saturation to just play with the defringe for right now. And see, the defringe isn't quite doing it. So I'm going to leave it up in here. So now I'm just going to desaturate that area slightly. And so that is, let's go all the way. That's looking pretty good, but I think what's going on now is I didn't have my density and my flow all the way up, so I might need to go back and hit another layer. So I might hit a new and then go on and hit another layer, okay? And that one's gonna duplicate the settings from my previous one, and so that's looking pretty good. And so let's go all the way up to here. All right, and um, so, now we're get really getting rid of that, but once again, we're really kind of on the edge. Do we? Is it too desaturated so that the blue isn't showing uh, from the sky? And so it's one of those things that you really need to make a, a strong determination of what to do. By the way, this reminded me there is another way to always see your selection, which you can hit this show selected mask overlay, or you can hover your mouse over the little button right here and it shows you where you selected and you can see in this area right here that it's actually a little bit lighter so i would probably want to fill it in to keep it a little more even anyway um it's going to be one of those things that's kind of seasoned to taste you need to get it just a little bit or get it just right or to your satisfaction and one image is probably not going to be the same as the next especially when you look at an image like these two, they probably took a lot of work in order to get rid of all of this fringing here, all this chromatic aberration and color. Although I would guess that they probably oversaturated this image to really highlight the fringing and so that you can really see it, um, you know, for this for this article. So take a look at it. This was just a quick tutorial on 
how to get rid of it. And so I think that is everything. Thanks again to Roy for sending over the two images. And yeah, I think that's it. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. See you.